care, health and social care, um, and health and social care and child care from now on. Thank you. And then um, we'll just pass over to Catherine. Oh, you're on mute, Catherine. <laughs> Hi, my name is Catherine Lyon. I am the head of hair and beauty for uh, the Manchester College. And we do hair and beauty in the Harper Hay campus in the north and the Northern campus in the south. And I'm going to hand you over. Thanks, Catherine. Yeah. Hi, everybody. I'm Maxine Gunning and I'm head of department for hospitality and catering and travel and tourism. And I'm going to hand over to Carol. Hi, my name's Carol Whitworth and I'm the Assistant Principal for Business, Computing and Digital Media, TV and Film. I'm going to hand over to Lynn. Thanks, Carol. Hi, I don't know if I've come up on the screen or not. But, um, I am Lynn Sanders. I'm Departmental Team Lead for Teacher Education. Um, we offer the initial teacher training courses as well as a degree and the Level 3 courses. Um, and I'll hand back to Lindsay for the moment. And I think finally we've got Stuart. Thanks, Lindsay. <clears throat> My name's Stuart Steen. I'm the Assistant Principal for Creative Arts at the Manchester College, and I oversee visual arts, music and media shortly, um, and also the uh, Performing Arts Department as well. Brilliant. Thanks, everybody. So first question we've got tonight is um, what different options does the college offer for adult learners um, in terms of levels of study? So um, I'm not sure who wants to take that one, but just be interested to hear kind of what the different levels we offer for students um, and, you know, the different levels in coming up. I could tell first, if you like. Um, in business and computing, we offer uh, adult courses from level one all the way effectively to higher education and degree level programmes. Uh, we offer some courses that are just um, like college certificate, if you like. So it's come along, have a go, learn how to do something. So learn how to use a piece of software. We offer other courses, which are professional courses, which are um, executed by the examining bodies. Brilliant. Similar in, uh, in, similar in visual arts as well, uh, and uh, music and performing arts. We've got a range of courses. From level one uh, right up to level five uh, offering a, a suite of, of different avenues so for example music we've got our mixing and dj at adult level one level two and we've also got a national diploma at level three for adults within visual arts we have our pattern cutting and garment construction at levels one two and three to really give us a good grounding in that skill sets over time and we also offer hnd and fashion as well Thanks, Stuart. So, yeah, so um, within hospitality and catering, we run qualifications that um, will, enable, will enable you to become a qualified chef or you can specify and go into food and beverage service, which will take you into restaurant management and, and event planning. Um, and we also uh, specialise in patisserie and confectionery. In travel and tourism, we do um, travel and tourism, we do cabin crew and we also do aviation. So you can learn um, how to uh, assist with flights, anything on the ground, baggage security, um, check-in desk, um, or the, you can do the travel and tourism route, which can take you into um, reservations, um, ho holiday bookings and resort reps. And that's level one, two and three across the, across the board. Thanks, Maxine. Julian? Yeah, so similar for our areas, so for health and social care, child care, and sport, we've got courses for adults from level one all the way up to higher education to H&D and, and degree level courses. But health and social care, we've also got quite a few short courses that just gives you really a taster um, before you might progress on to a level one. So there are short courses for three weeks um, and a six week course, things like in dementia or substance uh, misuse, etc. So, yeah, all the range from level one all the way up to H&D. Brilliant. Catherine, what about your area? So yes, we have, start with the level one, we've got an introduction which involves um, hair, media makeup and beauty. So it gives the learners a taster, the adult learners a taster of what they may want to specialise in. 
At level two, we've got hairdressing level two, we've got beauty therapy level two, and we've got media makeup level two. Progressing on to level three, we've got media makeup again, we've got the beauty therapy at level three, and we've got the hairdressing at level three. These programs, you can then progress onto the salon management at level four, the microblazing, or onto the skin rejuvenation and IPL and hair removal, which are level four qualifications. But if you didn't want to pass on to that route, you could pass on to our special effects and makeup within the USEN Manchester group. Um, so we have a lot of learners who want to progress right the way through from level one or two, right the way through up to their degrees at um, USEN Manchester. Brilliant, thanks Catherine. And finally, Lynn. Okay, thank you. Um, so we have the award in education and training, which is the short course at level three. Um, you also have the option of doing the level four upwards, the certificate in education, the postgraduate certificate in education, the professional graduate certificate in education and so on. Um, and that can go up to level seven. And we also have the BA in Education and Professional Development, which is a top-up course for those who complete the cert ed. Brilliant, thanks everybody. And um, just moving on to the next question, I know you've probably answered a little bit of this in the previous question, but can each of you just tell us a bit more about your departments in particular and the different subject areas that learners can study? This is probably a bit more of a focus on um, the campus locations that you teach in, um, tutor experience in those areas and, and USPs, you know, why should people study at the Manchester College versus other colleges? So um, we'll start with Maxine, if that's OK. Yes, that's great. Thanks, Lindsay. Um, yeah, so um, travel and tourism, we deliver travel and tourism at our Withinshaw campus and also at our uh, Harper Hay campus. Um, we have mock cabins at both at both sites, so it's a real working environment. We have all the baggage um, equipment there, all the in-flight equipment that's needed, so that's that's a unique selling point with, with travel and tourism. Um, hospitality and catering is run at Withinshaw and uh, Fielden, and um, what's absolutely exciting is that we are now moving from Openshaw to Harper Hay for September so it's completely fully kitted it's a brand new kitchen there with all the latest equipment so that, that's absolutely brilliant and really exciting and we'll also have a bakery at um, Harper Hay but I think one of the, the unique selling points for hospitality and catering is the master classes that we run so we work in collaboration with um, an organisation called the Chefs Forum and we're the only college in um, all of Manchester the nearest place next to us is Birmingham that have weekly masterclasses so we have celebrity chefs coming in we have chefs from industry from restaurants and it's not just from restaurants it's it's corporate catering it's canteen catering so the students get a wide uh, range of working with chefs who've, uh, who are still in industry now um, and what we're finding as well at the moment is um, my my area a lot of areas took a real battering during uh, lockdown with COVID um, and we, we were worrying about how, how it would pan out but as it happened um, I, Simon Wood phoned me last week they're absolutely desperate for new 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 chefs so I mean this is an absolutely ideal time for anybody to come on board within hospitality and catering and, and get a work placement at Simon Woods or Doug's at James Martin so it's, it's, it's absolutely uh, brilliant. The other thing I think that's a, a good point is all my team are all industry trained uh, and, and they've all got different um, areas of background. So Nick, one of the lecturers, worked for one of the, the Roos, Michelle Roo, worked at his place. Then I've got another member of staff, uh, Alex, who's an Italian, so he specialises in Italian dishes. Then we've got Mark, who runs the patisserie. Um, he's Belgian trained uh, baker. And he knows everything there is to know about sugar work. He's actually in London tomorrow. Um, two of our students have just got through to the final. So they're competing in London on, on um, tomorrow night they go on, on Wednesday day. So good luck to those students. And uh, I think that's a pretty good, unique selling point. Yeah, that's brilliant. Thanks, Maxine. It's really Thank interesting you. to hear about all those industry links that and opportunities Massive. that students can have and all the experience from the tutors to pass on. And like I said, I think that's a real unique selling point. And jobs, jobs are coming through. Lindsay, I'm getting lots and lots of inquiries. And Hillary, as well at, at college, um, we have a partner in the employability team. So Hillary works for the college and works with me in supporting students. And she's getting phone calls daily. So, yeah, ideal time. 
Brilliant. And it's somebody else that I know has got some fantastic employer links is Carol. So should we move on to you next, Carol? <clears throat> yes. Okay. Um, all right. And so the campus locations for adult, mm -hmm. the business at Lots and accounting are all based over at St. John's. And the computing is based at Openshaw. Uh, the computing will obviously be moving to our brand new facility in September 22 which has been purpose-built with some absolutely amazing equipment in there. Um, uh, yeah, as Lindsay said, our employer links in our department are second to none. We have lots and lots of employers that help us to actually design and develop the programmes. They come in and they do guest speaking, they do guest lecturing. You'll get opportunities to just have conversations with, with these people to ask how they've got where they've got, or, you know, what did they do? We've got several of our employers who, you know, for them, it's a second career. So they've done something else first, got bored and had a complete change and, and moved away from what they were doing and moved into the world of computing our business. Um, I think one of our unique selling points in the computing adult world is that two of our Cisco networking uh, teachers have fallen in the top 25% of Cisco teachers in the world for the last four years. So this isn't just top 25% in the UK. This is top 25% in the world. So they are amongst the best out there. So if, you know, Cisco networking or any kind of networking is, is what you're looking for, then you couldn't choose anywhere better than the Manchester College um, and you said Manchester because those, those staff teach across the two. So, you know, you can go straight from level one all the way to level six doing that type of a programme. Um, we have lots of law courses, people who are just starting off, um, just uh, administrative law, all the way to be, becoming an actual lawyer. Uh, we're very, very big on AAT and ACCA. And this year, even though COVID's been as it's been, we've had our best results for AAT and ACCA ever. And this is genuine results because these professional courses are not like a lot of the courses that have been out there since COVID. You've still had to do the exams. The exams have still been being set, whether they're remote or whether they've been on campus on a campus. So these are genuine results and they've been they've been phenomenal even through COVID. Uh, we have a great team there. Um, two of the teachers that came to us last year, just well, just before COVID. So it's two years ago now, isn't it? Time flies when COVID's here. Um, I've come from you know amazing backgrounds in accountancy themselves that have been doing it for 20 plus years. Um, and that, I think, is one of the reasons why they, it is so successful, because they are real life accountants. And a lot of our teachers that teach in the evenings as well on these courses are actually accountants and lawyers. So they are an accountant or a lawyer during the day and then they come along and they teach in the evenings. So, yeah, absolute top up there with their player links and up to date, relevant teachers who know what they're doing and know what they're talking about. Brilliant. Thanks so much, Carol. Um, Stuart, I'll move on to you next. Yeah, so we've got provision at our Sheena Simon campus, which is um, mainly our music, performing arts and visual arts. We've also got provision at our Northern campus, which is mainly visual arts. In relation to music at our uh, Sheena Simon campus, we've got uh, renowned DJs. Uh, Matt McKinley, who's internationally renowned, has played in Ibiza, Australia, um, you name it, he's been there. We also got him supported by Dave Fortune, who's also a well-known DJ. Really, you know, giving their expertise in the field and giving the hints and tips and tricks what they've learned in the trade and passing that directly to you, the students, which is absolutely critical in terms of in terms of getting into work. And similar to Maxine, I've seen before, our industry has been hit quite hard. However, we're now seeing lots of recovery uh, patterns coming coming aboard in terms of uh, venues reopening, gigs being put on COVID safe there. And we really do believe that there'll be a surge in this in terms of people wanting to engage back in the, in the creative sectors much more strongly than before. Uh, in terms of our visual arts provision, we have our, our foundation diploma, who uh, Fiona and Lou both teach on who are absolute experts in their area. And that a lot of our adult learners use that as a, a, a like an access route, if you like, although it's not an access course, they tend to use it as an access route to get straight into university. So if they've been good at art and, and design and, and different types of developing pieces of artwork, we strongly recommend that they would take that route that helps and gives them a fast track qualification to be able to seek further and higher education. 
And we've also got Nicola, who runs our uh, pattern cutting courses in our garment construction, and Pauline as well, who have been absolute experts in the area for 15, 20 years plus, who really know the ins, ins and outs of uh, every, every stitch and every zip, if you like, uh, of developing the garment construction. And we've had students go on to produce some real, uh, real fantastic uh, pieces of clothing that have been celebrated uh, across Manchester. So there's some real good mix of staff in there and absolute in-depth industry experience at the Manchester College that we could be able to offer you. Fantastic, thank you Stuart. Um, I'll pass on to Lynn next. Thank you Lindsay. Um, so we are based at the Field and Campus. Um, as I say, we offer our prime course, main course is the um, initial teacher training for the post 16 sectors for those who wish to teach in lifelong learning. Um, that is Probably one of our main unique selling points is the fact that we're one of the few organisations within Manchester who offer that programme. Um, we are part of the Education and Training Consortium, so although we are, um, I suppose, widespread in terms of offering the service within Manchester, we are also part of a national consortium. So we have the opportunity to share knowledge and practice with colleges across um, England. Um, myself and the team, we have been described in our recent um, revalidation as exemplary in the support that we give to students um, and also in our scholarship. And in summary, we have a, across the board 100 years plus experience of teaching. So we're quite knowledgeable about what we do. Um, and that's pretty much the teacher training. Fantastic. Thanks, Lynn. Um, I'll go on to Julia next. Yeah, thanks, Lindsay. Uh, very similar to the other areas in terms of, I think a strength for us is definitely the teachers. You know, the, the amount of experience they have. So for instance, in health and social care, we've got, we've got tutors that were former um, nurses in the sector. We've also got staff within childcare and, and counselling that are actually practitioners themselves. And so I think that's the main strength of, of, of what we do. Um, we've got also building a lot of work placement. So some areas don't do the work placement and don't get the accreditation. So we do in counselling, for instance. And that's that's a really key selling point. You know, if you look at our progression data, i.e., are they actually are you going to get a job from this? Which I know most people, that's what they want to know. Is, is it a change in direction? How are we going to get you there? It's extremely strong. You know, even to the point we've had some of level two health and social care tutors and students that have actually progressed on to HE and actually missed out level three and got places this year at university from level two, which is pretty unheard of. So that sort of shows the strength. Looking at the actual base uh, facilities and campuses, so health and social care, childcare is based predominantly at Openshaw and Harper Hay. The level three health and social care is at Northenden. And for counselling, that's at Fielden. Uh, so that's at the Fielden campus. So. Also, facilities are incredible. I won't go too much into that because we're moving from, from the nickels into a purpose built. So we'll talk about that later. So, yeah, I think it's all about building in those employability skills and links with employers, making sure you get a work placement to actually progress onto a job. Thanks, Julian. And then finally, we've got Catherine. <clears throat> Hi, so again, we've got really great progression within the area from uh, the level ones to the level fours and fives and up at the USAM Manchester. But again, we've got a key strength in our teachers. Many of them still work in salons and um, in spas. Uh, a, a lot of them do a lot of makeup shoots for camera uh, work, that type of thing. And they're working very, very uh, effectively and busy in, in the industry as well as working for us. But I think what I would like to say at the moment is we've had a big representation on the new industry standards. So we're very prepared as we work towards the technical qualifications, even which some adults will want to do. Um, and the, we've had a big focus on the new curly hair types and the diverse. Many of our um, staff are uh, experienced and qualified in the wider range of um, African Caribbean techniques that some college really actually the only college in the Man Manchester area nearest college to um, that is providing that type of uh, all round education was actually a Birmingham college so that's a real strength for us we've got that whole diversity and um, that we can offer both uh, but with our tutors and also with our clients our clients are from a wide range of the Manchester area 
with regards to campus we do reflect both of the um the all the same levels both at the northern din campus and at the harper hay campus so you've got the introduction levels right the way up to the level three and then the progression either to field and campus or we've got a, a, a level four program at the northern din campus so as we do actually have some students that do come from harper hay and progress on some of the adult students that come and progress on to the level four with uh, and actually remain within within the college environment we've got uh very well equipped salons with state of the art equipment we've invested um, in the higher level uh, equipment that is, and products we've got the, the well arranges of products we've got um, the medicate we've got the professional products that are actually duplicated in the salons and um, clinics and obviously the aesthetic routes that are very popular at the moment um, we, we we are trying to reassure our students that they should definitely uh, take the opportunity to have that background as things people are uh, progressing into three or four day uh, courses in aesthetics that are we, we're really about the foundations and the knowledge behind that talking about the covid um issues i think you'll all know how, how difficult it is to get your hair or makeup or a massage or all those things done the industry is really buoyant PPI, uh, PPE is all in place. We've got the same reflections as industry within the salons. And um, we, we've really put lots of um, safe working practices in place with um, the normal plus the additional PPE. So there is an expectation that you would be expected to have the minimum protection of PPE in, in the clinic and uh, salon environments. Just talking about what, what other people have mentioned is we have, Currently, we've had a learner today that's uh, achieved a fourth place uh, on a makeup on a, on a national award. We do a lot of competition work. Um, I know mentioned, people have mentioned that before. We do a lot of work with World Skills, which is where our students compete nationally and internationally. And we have had those opportunity for both the younger and adult students to go on overseas trips. They've been to Madrid and that type of thing. So there's also, if you're watching the, if you're into the makeup side, we have got a student who has progressed through the departments onto the um, the GLOW program. So that's very, very current and uh, very popular with our hair and media makeup um, students. Brilliant, thanks very much, Catherine. Um, some really exciting you know, things going on from new facilities to products you're using to industry partners um so yeah lots of exciting things and loads of great reasons to come and study at the manchester college and um, so final question for tonight is um telling us a bit more about your departments for facilities so again you've, you've touched on them briefly but i know there's a few departments that have got new facilities um being built at the minute some come in this september some come in the september after um so if you could just expand on those a little bit more just so students know what to expect when they come and study with us so um i'm gonna start with um, Stuart actually, because I know that you've got some really exciting facilities at our new city centre campus um, in September 22. Yeah, so in the new city centre build, uh, all my area is going to be housed within there. And we're going to have uh, all state-of-the-art sprung, sprung flooring for our performing arts. We're going to have specialist workshop studios for our jewellery, uh, ceramics, uh, garment construction, um, uh, different art practices. We're also going to have top of the range uh, DJ facilities and music performance facilities for our students to be able to create and make music. And, uh, you know, we're going to have the expertise and the staffing that we've just talked about moving into that city centre campus in 2022. So that's in 12 months time. That's not to say we don't have good facilities already. We do have large um, art and design studios um, in our Shakshi and the Simon campus. They're old and quirky and a lot of our students like that as well. Uh, and they've got the big rooms and lots of space to be able to lay out their artwork and be able to work on the artwork. And in particular in our adult offer, because it's flexible and we have evening classes as well, there's plenty of space for our adults to be able to work and design and create uh, their own pieces of artwork. Uh, same at our Northern campus in terms of space. So there's lots of space for us to be able to work in. We've got flexibility in our evening offer. And we've all got also got even more exciting facilities further down the line in the next 12 months. Great, thank you, Stuart. Um, I'll just pass on to Carol. I know you touched briefly before on some of the you know new facilities in the city centre campus, but what kind of equipment and stuff can people expect when they're joining us? Is it going to be you know top of the range stuff that used in industry? You know, what can people expect really? Yeah, so the, the computing part of my department is moving to the brand new campus in the city centre in 22, along with all Stuarts. 
So that is going to be a really exciting campus. I went for a tour around there last week and it's looking phenomenal. Um, the equipment we're going to have in there is all brand new, state of the art. It's going to be absolutely amazing. Um, we've got the, the double screens. Um, but it, basically, it's one screen, but it splits into two and they're all curved. So that it's like it's like the stuff they're using at the top of the range in industry now. Um, we've got two VR labs that are going in there for all the virtual reality stuff. Um, and we've got the full brand new Cisco equipment lab. In fact, we've got the, the brand new Cisco equipment lab now. So that we've, that's just been fitted. So that will be coming with us next year. And we've just got our first FE Cisco equipment lab that's going to be fitted into the Nichols campus this year, ready for our uh, September 21 starters. And we'll take that equipment with us when we move to the new building. So yeah, so for September this year, all the computing will be based at Nichols. And then the following year, we will just move to the new building. So we've basically got Nichols all to ourselves between media and computing. So that'll be that's really quite a good, nice, vibrant campus because it's all digital students all together. And we've got loads of space because there's just only going to be us there this year. So there'll be loads of room. Um, for business, uh, most of the business provision um, from Openshaw and Nichols is moving to the Sheena Simon campus that Stuart touched on earlier which is a really big, beautiful, quirky building, right slap bang in the centre of Manchester. And the business department's moving there in September um, for, the, for the foreseeable future until the phase two is built. Uh, there will still be some adult courses being delivered at the St John's campus, which is just around the corner in Spinning Fields. Uh, so we will be leaving our um, Silex and um, accounting courses at St John's, but everything else will be at Sheena Simon, so really accessible because um, it's right bang outside of tram stop, train stop, bus stop, you name it, you know, you can get to it from that. So it's going to be really great. Um, and again, with, with business, you know, just because it's business and, and you don't need state-of-the-art equipment, we've, we've got lots of new equipment in there now ready that, and more to come so that, you know, you guys will have um, access to laptops that you can borrow and take home as well as um, really top top rate stuff that's in the classroom. So yeah. Thanks, Carol. Um, and then we'll move on to Julian next. Yeah, thanks, Lindsay. Yeah, uh, from September, it's it's been really exciting to move from Nichols campus to uh, Openshaw, where we've got our centre of excellence for health and social care, child care and sport. So for health and social care, we've been working and consulting with the NHS. Uh, to build a hospital ward. So there'll be a hospital ward in there, um, Mock 1, uh, which is fully uh, up and running from September. Uh, we've also got a care room from there. And from the childcare point of view, we've got a full nursery uh, and a sanitary room as well. And then for sports, we've got a brand new full-size indoor pool, outdoor football pitch, a strength and conditioning room, um, and a gym and a sports lab as well. So really looking at facilities, I think you asked the question of are they industry standard, which they definitely, and from the point of view, we'd expect some industries actually wanting to get in to use our facilities, because for think for some of the smaller businesses, they definitely wouldn't be able to have the sort of equipment we've got. So it's uh, really exciting from September. You have been very lucky in your department, Julian, to have so well, much yeah, investment in all the facilities. Lucky, yeah. <laughs> really looking forward to seeing all those as well. Um, and as you say, you know, some are coming up in September, so it's really not that far away either. So students that can be applying now can enjoy those facilities, you know, sooner rather than later. Um, I'll just pass on to Catherine next, if you could just touch on your facilities a bit more. Thanks. So our facilities really um, are very mirrored on the both campuses. We have... Um, specialised hairdressing salons, barbering um, uh, studios. We've had been very popular, particularly at the Northern campus, the adults who are, want to up to upgrade their skills so that they're certified um, in barbering is ever so popular. We've gone from a very small group of six, a handful of learners to up to 40, with at least 30 of those uh, learners being um, male adults uh, wanting to upskill their barbering because it's so popular, um, their barbering skills. So we've got, so that's the hairdressing salons and the barbering um, studio with all the bar, so you can do all the shaving, hot shaving um, or, and the head massage. Uh, 
and practice those. We've got, and we also do work related. We do expect even our adults to be in a work placement while they're with us. Um, we also have two uh, beauty therapy studios with couches so we can do the massage, the facials, the manicure, pedicure, waxing. We have makeup studios where the learners are using the hair, learning the hair and media makeup courses. We've got some evening classes for adults. We've also got some taste today, full cost recovery. For example, um, a particular uh, smoky eye makeup, that type of thing. And then um, obviously at the Northern Dunn campus, we've got the level four, which is the microblading. For, and, and that's really based for adults, learners, the microblading and the um, skin rejuvenation. Uh, so we've got the beauty therapy, the media makeup studios, the barbering studios and the hairdressing salons and they're all um, state of the equipment. We've got great equipment at Northern Dunn, but obviously next year, the Northern Dunn campus will be moved to Withenshaw. So that'll be a great opportunity for us to work with the hospitality and travel and tourism team to hold events and make it really buzzy and vibrant. So that will be uh, the next uh, 2023. Um, but even so, the, the facilities at Northern Dunn are fabulous and they're replicated with at the Harper Hay campus with a similar offer for adults. It's really good. I think that leads nicely on to Maxine then, obviously, if you're kind of going to be having these fab events yeah. and sharing the same kind of facilities. Absolutely. Thanks, Lindsay. Yeah, just much to say with um, Stuart and, and Julian, really, because we'll be going into the city centre campus and Carol's team, really. I think the collaboration between departments. So Stuart will have an event on or a, a, a theme night. So obviously we'll cater for that event. Uh, Carol's team will support us with video and filming. We do quite a lot of chef forum events where um, 18 months ago, two years ago, we had James Martin and Lisa Goodwin Allen on and, and Carol team were in and they did the uh, all the video in for that so it, we all work in collaboration and again I, I will be doing with with Catherine when they come to within shore so it, it's brilliant that the students mingling and, and matching what happens in industry but yeah I think the moves for me and um, pretty much are when we get to city centre uh, the equipment that we'll have there it's the new induction ovens um, which is just the best thing since sliced bread if you like and I know that this is the case because the chefs that we get in on a weekly basis from industry don't have the equipment we have they actually come in and they, they can't believe that a college has got the equipment but we've got when they haven't got it in industry so I mean that just shows how, how well equipped we are so we have um, in both campuses um, kitchens and restaurants to serve the food to the the customers we do specialize in the pastry kitchen at Fielden but we will have one at, at Fielden um, we have the mock cabins for the cabin crew students we also do a lot actually I didn't mention earlier of hobby courses so we, they're not always long courses we do a lot of courses for people that are working in industry now that might want to go away and specialize in chocolate they might not necessarily want to do a course for a year they might want to learn how to do um, cake decorating uh, and intermediate cake decorating so it's not always long courses it's it's about development um, and for the smaller courses so yeah I uh, I actually will say confidently 100% confident that we've got the best equipment going actually equals if not batters industry that's really great to hear thanks Maxine thanks Linda and then, and then finally I think we've got Lynn in terms of your facilities yes thank you <laughs> um, we are obviously quite a small sort of provision so we have um currently our move is to be confirmed as to where we're going so we are based at field and for the next academic year um, we have, we take up sort of half of the third floor with our own dedicated teaching rooms. Um, so we have all the resources that our trainees would need there, including access to the use of the Clever Touch and the practice there. Mm -hmm. We have the well-stocked HE library at Fielden, as well as the additional facilities um, needed, including good parking, because a lot of our students are mature students and, and part time and have other commitments. Um, but we also have the um, in terms of facilities, our, we can support our trainees with their finding teaching practice. So it may well be that some of our trainees are making use of all those fabulous facilities that have been mentioned elsewhere. Um, and I think that's all I can probably really say about teacher ed. Okay. But we are, we're all in one place, so you can locate us quite easily. 
Fantastic, thank you. Lots of exciting things happening there, different campuses. And obviously, you know, it's not just about the new facilities. We've got some fantastic existing facilities and the equipment in there. Um, so I think people can be confident, you know, when they come to the college, they'll be using, you know, top notch equipment, the same as industry. Um, so thanks everyone for answering the questions. We're at the point in the evening, we've got the final 10 minutes just for anyone um, that's joined the event to ask any questions they might have. That might be um, generally about the college, um, about applying, it could be about a specific um, area. So I'll just leave um, the chat box, obviously, so the Q&A box, if anyone's got any questions to just ask directly in there. Um, the first question I've got actually is um, a question we quite often get from adults is that, you know, do they have to start courses in September or are there opportunities all year round or different times of the year to join courses? Um, I'm not sure who wants to take that one or if it's different for each area. <clears throat> yeah, I'll, I'll pick up Lindsay if that's OK. So, yes, we do do hobby courses. So we'll do short courses that could be 10 weeks long um, for that would suit uh, anybody. But um, for me, if an adult um, came for, for, ex for example, catering, if an adult came to me in October, the course had already started in September and they wanted to join the course, for me, absolutely they could. If they're an adult, they've been cooking, they may have cooked for a family for many, many years. So I, I would obviously would do a skill scan, but yeah, they could start, at, you know, dependent on what they know, they could absolutely start um, at a, a later rate. It doesn't have to be September by any means. And we do do January starts as well. So um, people can come in in January and, and come and join both travel and tourism and hospitality and catering. So, yes, we do. Yes, there's a couple of key points in the year that they can join. But as you said, you know, they can come along and hopefully join, you know, potentially some of the shorter courses. It doesn't necessarily have to be a one or a two year course as well. And I think that's a good thing about obviously adult learners will be joining us for lots of different reasons. They might be studying on the, you know, a hobby on the side of the job they've already got. They might want to, um, they might be out of employment and want to study full time, or they might be looking for something in the evening that fits around kind of their work or family life as well. So just be interesting if any other areas, um, you know, could discuss any options that you've got for people that might, you know, want something that isn't necessarily full time that maybe fits around their, you know, busy life. Yeah, I mean, I was just going to say, I think the best thing to do is, is to come along and have a chat because there's so many options. It's impossible to tell you about them all on here. Um, I mean, some courses are prescripted and will start and will take an entire year. Or like the, the IT uh, adult courses, we do the level one from September to Christmas, then the level two from Christmas to the end of the year. So it would depend where you fit. Uh, but then other courses like the professional courses, um, the law and accounting, that type of thing, or what we call roll on, roll off courses. And what that means is they're just continually going. So there's, there's lots and lots of joining points throughout the year that you can join those courses. Uh, we also do a lot of what uh, Maxine calls hobby courses. That's a really good term. I'll have to remember that one. Uh, so if you want to learn, want to learn to come along and learn how to use Photoshop, or you're not very good with with the spreadsheet, or you're not very good um, on a PowerPoint. We do what we call full cost recovery courses in the evenings. But what that means is it means that you have to pay for those. They're not funded by the government. They're just things that you want to come along and do. And they're short courses and they usually last somewhere between six and 12 weeks. But yeah, I think, there's, I think in most areas, there's an absolute array of options for, for joining courses and, and whether the full-time courses are whether the evening courses, because you can do a lot of courses that are effectively full-time, but in the evening, um, so some of the work is done in the evenings at, on campus and it's like a blended approach. So some of it will be done at home where you do it at the weekends or the nights that you're not, you're not at college. So, yeah, lots of different options. No, I agree, actually. Sorry, Lindsay, with, with Carol, you just made me think there, Carol, about working. So in my in in my in her, uh, hospitality and catering, Monday tends to be the day off for industry um, because they work all weekend. So I, I pr prominent, pr predominantly put courses on for adults on a Monday and a Tuesday because I know that their employers aren't e expecting them in. So just like Carol said, it's an, on an individual basis. Come in and have a chat and, we, we, you know, we can we can try and make a model that, that fits, definitely. Yeah, just a specific question for your area, Carol, that we've had in the chat box. Um, someone said they've just um, done their application for pre-access level two extended certificate in business. They'd like to ask, do you do some short courses which would help them better understand in more detail about software or do you think there's a course um 
that would, you know, specifically help with that? Yeah, if you need any particular software on that course, it would be included within that course. Um, if it's because, let's say, if, if it's business, for example, you might need to be able to use spreadsheet in quite some depth. Uh, and you wanted to do something extra, then we do do extra courses just about spreadsheets. But again, they're the ones that are in the evenings that um, are what we call full cost recovery. But in the main, if you need to use software for your course, that will be taught during the, the course of the course, if you like. Brilliant. Thank you. Um, obviously, any more questions, feel free to, to pop them in the Q&A just over these last couple of minutes. Um, does anyone else kind of want to touch on some of the different options they've got for adults in terms of, you know, starting at different times a year or you new know, short courses versus longer ones? Yeah, for, for me, Lindsay, it's very similar to what Carol said. We try to sort of build it around uh, people's lives. And obviously, like you said, some people want to do it uh, full time. But, it, but a lot a lot of adults, as you know, um, will want to sort of have a job in the day, but want to maybe retrain in the evening. And that also might be because of childcare commitments, et cetera, as well. So we, we do try and model it around what, what the individuals want. Um, and we do what's called fast track courses. So for in counselling, it will be in the evening. You can either choose to do for a year or you could actually do it more condensed and do it into a, a different block, a 12 week block. So there's, there's various different options, but it's worth like, like people who said either coming down or, or contacting us uh, directly and we, and we can provide information on, on the different options, but also the funding options, because some courses are free, which is great. Um, some courses, obviously, you'll need to get funding for, which is absolutely fine. You'll get a loan and some is actually you'll have to pay an amount to it. But we can advise on that as well for each individual course. I think it's worth mentioning off the back of that as well, that we do actually have um, some sessions on this Wednesday um, about what funding options are available and a panel discussion just like this. And then there's a actually a, a drop in um, from seven o'clock. There's two 15 minute drop ins with the finance and funding team, just in case anybody does have any questions about, um, you know, how to fund their course or what finance options there are available and um, depending on the course that you're studying. So um, obviously don't forget, you know, there's lots of other um, sessions this week to learn a bit more about the college. It's also worth mentioning that this evening there are further sessions with some of our curriculum curriculum areas um, from um, seven o'clock. Um, I know tonight, unfortunately, we've not had a representative from um, automotive construction engineering and logistics, but there are drop-in sessions with our tutors from seven o'clock tonight if you do want to find out a bit more. Um, anyone else want to add anything before we close for the evening? Yeah, Lindsay, we um, in the Hair and Beauty, we've got an open day, uh, well, an afternoon at the Harper Hay campus where people can come along, do a bit of a taster, have their hair done, nails done, or just even see the students at work. So we've got the afternoon is open at the Harper Hay campus. And we've also got the Northern Dean campus open in the evening for people to drop in, have a look around the different the salons, have a look around the makeup studio, etc. And there'll be some, plenty of staff on if uh, people want to do uh, have any, uh, you know, uh, want to have a chat with any of the tutors. So that'll be Wednesday, this Wednesday, the 16th in uh, Harper Hay in the afternoon and the evening session in uh, Northern Dean. Um, from do people just drop eight. in for those or do they have to pre -book? Yeah, no, they can just drop in. There's plenty of spaces at both those campuses, so there's nothing, no issues really. I mean, if, I don't think 100 people are going to come all at once. So um, it's, it's very safe and we have the COVID measures in place at, at all the campuses. Okay, thanks for that, Catherine. That sounds really exciting. And who wouldn't want, you know, a free treatment while they're finding out a bit yeah. more about the course as well? Yeah. Lindsay, just off the back of the delivery models, we obviously have September starts, we have January starts, and we also have uh, six-week courses for the, some of the hobby courses in jewellery and etching techniques. So we run them out of our Northern Dean campus, and they're six, normally six-week cycles. So you know people can come, and it's only a couple of hours a week for six weeks, and they learn different skills and techniques for those that want to have a go. Or I've got a genuine interest in in them types of areas. Brilliant. Sorry, Lindsay, can I just say as well, and I don't know adults, whether all adults, but I know all adults that I tend to see are sometimes quite nervous about coming to college. Maybe they've not been in college for many years and quite nervous. And, and, and I know as us as a panel now are trying to reassure people, but like everybody said, the staff are the best people. The, you know, people need to come in and, and, and speak to our teachers. They're brilliant. But 
also for people not to worry they pick a course now they think for example they want to do professional cookery then after a number of weeks they decide to change their mind they want to do business well that's fine you know carol and i will work together i'll work with carol's hods and we'll work it around so just really i think i'd like to just reassure the adults that may be feeling a bit nervous that you know just come and speak to us that we whatever the problem or the issue is we've, we've heard it all before and we, we always come up with a solution so I think that's really it for me. I think it's good to know that adults have that support because especially at the minute, I think people are a bit unsure about what they want to do. They might want a change of career. They might be made redundant. Yeah. Um, and it's having that flexibility. And, you know, we've got a great careers and welfare team that are doing sessions yeah. on Thursday as well that can give you any advice if you're not quite sure about the, the course that you want to try. And, you know, there is the, always the option to change, as you say. Absolutely. And, you know, we want people to be happy with what they're studying, don't they, and to stay with us and... Um, you know do what they love because if you're an adult and you come back to education you know you should be enjoying what you're doing you're obviously come for either a change of career or to get better at a hobby or whatever it is so you know don't be afraid to ask questions as Maxine said and you know um you can email our inquiries team there's information on that in the chat box um and obviously you know just pick up the phone all of our you know tutors and heads of department etc are going to be you know happy to to answer your questions um and you know ease any kind of worries that you have as well um, so I'm just going to wrap it up for the evening, unless anyone's got anything else to add. Brilliant. So I just want to say thank you to everyone that attended our event this evening. Um, thanks to Julie and Catherine, uh, Maxine, um, Carol, Lynn and Stuart for joining us. We do have more Adult Learner Live panel discussions running until Thursday and drop-in sessions with our tutors for all our subject areas. You can have a chat with them and also find out a bit more information if you, you specifically know what subject area or course you want to study. Uh, please visit the website. Um, Amelia's put the details in the chat there, but it is tmc.ac.uk forward slash TMC Live to register. If you'd like to apply to the Manchester College for 2021, please visit our website, tmc.ac.uk. And you can also find out a bit more about all the adult provision we've got at tmc.ac.uk forward slash adults. As I mentioned, all that information is in the chat box. Uh, we hope you have a lovely evening. Thanks to all our panellists. You've been absolutely fantastic. Um, and we hope um, you know to see you soon at the college and that you'll be applying to us. Thanks very much. Bye. Thank, Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye, everyone.